As you may know, I've done quite a few videos on retro sound devices, and I'll include a link to those other videos. I thought what I'd do is tackle this uh, AY38910 device. It's quite an old device. I believe it was uh, um, initially produced in the late 70s, and it's found its way into many uh, retro computers, uh, Spectrum, uh, ZX, uh, I believe the Apple uh, uh, sound card had, had one of these in it too. Um, now, I was originally going to uh, do this with an ESP32. Uh, the ESP32 is a 3.3 de volt device, and this is a 5 volt device, but I thought so long as I was just writing to it, um, I'd have no problems. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it uh, working uh, by myself. I, I was attempting to use one of these um, IO expander chips to uh, basically communicate I2C to the to this device and then have this device fan out to the data input lines on the um, uh, the AY3 uh, I couldn't get that working and in fact later on I uh, I did some uh, a bit more research and found that the uh, the AY device is particularly sensitive to the timing of the uh, uh, of how you set the pins. So what I, I did move on to is uh, this library here, which is a great, uh, a great set of tools. Um, uh, so this is Andy4495. So Andy, if you, you ever happen to run across this video, thank you very much for your GitHub repo. But this is a full Arduino library um, that has support for the device. So let's have a little uh, look at the device itself and uh, see some of its capabilities and pinouts. Uh, and I'll include a link to everything you see here. So this is a great, uh, this uh, is a great full manual for the uh, for the device itself. So as you can see, uh, this device is a programmable sound generator. Um, let me just let's just go down to the pin. So here's here's the basic setup. Um, so you have a uh, controlling device. Uh, in my case. Uh, I, I used an Arduino Nano as well as an ESP32, which I ended up get, getting working once I once I had the right toolkit. But as you can see, basically you have a microcontroller which uh, talks to the AY38910 through a series of uh, bus control pins here and a series of data pins here. So basically, as you program this, um, and then you get uh, there's three channels of output on the device, A, B, and C, and you simply combine them together, run it through some sort of audio amp, and uh, the sounds come, uh, come out of the speaker. So before we get on to the, um, uh, the circuitry itself and the setup, uh, let's just do a quick demo that shows the device in action producing some, uh, some tunes. So here's the setup on the breadboard, and just to go through quickly, up the top here, uh, I've got an Arduino Nano and the a AY8910 uh, up the top here. Um, similar setup down the bottom with an ESP32 and the AY8910. Uh, now, as I mentioned, this is a 3.3 volt device and this is a 5 volt device. So, so long as I'm just sending data out to it, uh, I should be fine. But anyway, let's just hear a quick sample of the tune. That's just a, a quick sample of the types of sounds that you can uh, get out of the device. So let's go back now uh, and have a look at the schematics, both for the uh, Nano as well as the ESP32, and uh, we'll see what's, uh, what's uh, making this tick. Okay, so here's the uh, schematic for the, uh, for, for the setup. I've got uh, an Arduino Nano. This is the Arduino Nano here. This is the ESP32. Now they're not connected at the same time, so you either connect one or the other. But let's just zoom into the ESP32 and see what's going on. So um, the main, uh, so the, there's three main outputs on the AY38910 channel A, uh, B, and C on pins uh, 4, 3, and 38, uh, respectively. Um, you actually drive the um, AY38910 through a series of data lines here from DA0 to DA7. And then you control how you're writing to the device, what you're actually doing, whether you're reading registers, writing registers, what have you, through these three lines here, BC1, BC2, and BDA. Um, and then finally, for both of these, you have to provide the uh, AY38910 with a, a clock pulse. Now, 
Uh, that can vary between uh, one megahertz and I believe up to four megahertz. And I've got that coming out of, uh, of uh, SD3 here on the ESP32. Uh, as we'll get into the code, uh, we'll see how I'm doing that. It's just a simple uh, reuse of the, uh, the PWM signal that you can get out in the ESP32. Uh, for the Nano, it's a uh, kind of a similar setup. We've got the data lines here and the uh, bus control lines here. And then the clock from the Arduino Nano uh, comes from a special D9 pin where you can configure this D9 pin to output uh, a, you know, a reasonably high frequency signal. Just moving over to the left a little bit, you can see all those three output lines are tied together. Uh, grounded through a 1K resistor, and then the result flows through this um, this simple audio amplifier setup here with an LM386, and then the final output's going to my speaker. Okay, so let's talk in a little more detail on these bus control lines because that is one of the the trickiest parts of controlling the uh, the AY. So just moving over to the uh, documentation. And you can see here that there's a specific sequence that you have to set to first um, uh, pick the register that you're talking to and then to write data to that register. And these two uh, signals here have to be very close together. So there's some uh, fairly uh, significant timing challenges that you've got, um, which make it very difficult to do um, if you're controlling it through, say, one of those, uh, P, uh, the PCF8575. Uh, and that's basically the magic of uh, Andy's toolkit, is he actually uses all three registers, B beta, BC1, and BC2, and he only changes one bit at a time to do the, uh, the latch address and then the write data signals. Um, so uh, as you can see here, let's just scroll up a little bit and we'll see, the, um, uh, we'll see those three control signals there. So to latch an, an address, so in other words, lat, uh, this is picking the, the register address that you want to write to, you've got two op options, either beta is high and BC2 and BC1 are both low, or alternatively, you've got uh, uh, all three of them high. Now, as I said, the, the trick is you've got to make sure that when you're changing the values of these that, the, that you do it, I believe it has to be within 10 microseconds of each other. So what Andy does is he basically, he's only changing one bit at a time in his toolkit, uh, and so everything works out uh, fine. Let's move on now um, using uh, the, uh, the Arduino library that I have. Let's uh, do some simple sounds and some simple noise and, uh, uh, and let's see this in action. So the first example we're going to go through is just emitting some simple tones here, uh, again using the Arduino library. And you can see I've got uh, two basic sections here, one for the ESP32 and one for the Arduino Nano. And then uh, the constructor here, basically, uh, you give it the eight pins from uh, uh, DA7 through DA0 in these, uh, these eight pins here. And then the final three pins are BC, uh, VDA, BC1, and BC2. So you can see that I've got uh, pins 4, 16, and 17 for those respectively. Now, uh, for the ESP32, um, you know, for both of these, you need a, uh, a clock signal to the AY. Uh, for the ESP32, as I said, I'm just using the uh, ESP32 uh, uh, LED PWM library to emit an appropriate, uh, a, a, a one megahertz signal. And then down to the uh, Arduino Nano portion, we've got the same setup here, obviously different pins for the, for the Arduino Nano. And then there's this little piece of magic code here, which emits the same one megahertz signal on the output, uh, obviously through a different mechanism. Now that, that is uh, basically, you have to use pin nine, at least for the Nano. That's the only pin that has this capability. And then um, the library itself has uh, the tones that you emit uh, encoded in these, um, in these hash defines here. Uh, and then simply to, to get this started, you basically call PS, PSG begin. And then you set the amplitude that you want for, uh, for each of the uh, channels. I'm only using uh, A and B here. You uh, 
configure the mixer to say I want to enable both of these channels. You can see there's a knot of those two awed together. And then off you go. Uh, and, and, you know, this is uh, part, of the, uh, the, part of how the toolkit works is you've basically got a course, uh, reg a course register and a fine register that you need to write with, the, with these values. And, and that is basically, there's the top, um, top five bits is in, is in the course register, the bottom eight bits is in the fine register. They're combined together to give you a specific frequency that you want to output. Now, what that frequency is, uh, the output frequency, depends on the frequency of your uh, input clock signal. So obviously this will change. If you, uh, if you increase the input clock signal, you'll uh, uh, also increase the output frequency. So anyhow, let's have a look at this uh, going on the board. Again, we're just uh, sort of playing some notes and uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see it in action. Okay, so I've just flashed that to the uh, ESP32. And you can see that's just simply playing in uh, a series of increasing and then decreasing um, uh, notes. And, uh, you know, the delay valves can configured in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the Arduino code itself. So let's move on now to, uh, uh, to the noise function of the, uh, the um, AY3, and uh, we'll see that in action. Here's the noise example. Now the setup's ex exactly the same uh, for all of these, but uh, the noise example, um, there is a, a, a single noise generator in the AY3, and you can output that noise on any one of A, B, and C. Uh, what you can't configure is two different noise sources and have them, have them on two different channels, uh, respectively. So this is basically um, uh, with the uh, noise uh, functionality, uh, there's this noise uh, period register that you program, and that basically has the frequency of the noise. So the higher this value here, the lower the frequency of the noise. Now you've only got uh, 30, you've only got uh, eight bits of, uh, uh, of, sorry, not eight bits, you've got uh, five bits of resolution on the noise register. So you've really got sort of 32, 31 different um, values of uh, frequ uh, frequency of noise. But anyway, let's have a look at this. What this basically, what this little piece of code basically does is it, uh, uh, it varies the, the noise val, but it's also varying the amplitude of the output signal so that we've got a sort of a, a, a decay on the signal here. So as it goes through, it basically uh, reduces, the, um, uh, reduces the amplitude successively of the output noise. So it sounds more like a, uh, I guess, a, a gunshot or something like that, uh, a laser uh, going off. But anyway, let's see this one in action. Okay, I've just splashed the noise there. Let's turn the volume up. So as you can hear there, I've got uh, sort of a decay on the output. So the noise uh, uh, gradually reduces in volume. And I'm also uh, adjusting the frequency of the emitted noise too. So for the final example, uh, let, let's do some tunes here. And the tunes are a little bit more involved. Actually, the code's very simple, but uh, actually getting the YM files and processing them is a, is a little bit more involved. So again, I'm, uh, I'm going from Andy's site here. And there's, there's basically, uh, I guess, f f four or five different steps that you have to do. The first one is to actually find some source y uh, YM files. And they're available in many places, and Andy in includes a, a few links to those uh, to those places. But once you have found them, the first step that you have to do is uh, uh, use LHA to uncompress those files. Uh, and then once you've uncompressed the files, you then have to post-process process it with this. Uh, I, I I chose method two here using Python in this decoder.py that. Uh, that is in the GitHub repo. So basically, you uh, run it through this uh, um, uh, this interleaving um, 
uh, processor here. And then finally, uh, there's also this Python file also exists in this GitHub repo. You have to convert the output to, to a header file. So if we have a look at the, um, we have a look at, uh, at chip tunes here, you can see that the actual uh, tune itself is encoded in these header files which are produced there. Uh, and then uh, basically it's a simple process of iterating through this header file uh, calling PSG right for each of the values in the header file. So the end result is pretty simple, uh, but getting there is, is pretty complex. So let's uh, move over to the, um, the board again and we'll load a different tune in and, uh, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, hit, we'll hear some retro tunes. Okay, so I've picked a different tune. Let me just hit uh, reset. I leave the uh, the viewers to uh, guess what what that tune is. Uh, but anyway, uh, I had a, quite a bit of fun with this uh, little device. Like I said, I was hoping to get there by myself, but uh, I needed <laughs> I ended up needing quite a bit of help from uh, from that GitHub repo I saw. Now I'll include links to the um, where you can get the AY three eighty nine tens from. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. I, I got mine off AliExpress. Um, uh, I don't know, you know, I'll, I'll include a link to the, uh, to the vendor that I purchased from. I, I'm sure there are a pile of uh, non-functioning ones uh, out there on various other links, but, uh, but these, uh, these ones seem to work pretty well. Um, and uh, well, anyway, that, that's all I intended to cover in this video. Um, I hope you, uh, I hope this is of value and uh, someone uh, um, wants to replicate this. Uh, I had a bit of fun uh, pulling this together. And uh, uh, for those of you interested in the, um, the SDR that I'm building up, uh, I'm still working on that. Uh, uh, don't fear, I've been a little uh, lax on getting videos out uh, the past uh, month or so. So uh, hopefully I'll have a new uh, SDR video uploaded soon. Anyway, that's all for now. Catch you all later.